Hi everyone, this is Diane and I am very excited to tell you that I have finished two Raggedy Ann journals and I have them in my shop ready to go to a new home. So if you love these journals after you take a look at this video, just follow the link underneath the video um, to go to my shop and you can see if either of these journals are still available. Before I look at the, at the journals though, I just want to show you I have um, gathered the leftover materials and a few extra supplies into a little bundle. Uh, I wouldn't call it a full journal kit because you'll need to add at least papers to it, pages. But uh, there's a lot of supplies here that you could create your own uh, Raggedy Ann journal with. So first of all is the Raggedy Ann and the Cookie Snatcher little golden book and it is 1972. It was given to someone in 1986. Um, you can see that it's a little bit dirty on the front page and some dirt here which I think adds to the character, the vintage quality of the book. The other pages look nice. There's some dirt on the back. So there's that. And then I'm also going to include this book. It was a paperback book. You can cut, um, I, use, I use pages out of it and cut illustrations out. You can cut phrases out <coughs> and also the illustrations and to use in your junk journal. The cover is cute. Uh, here's a couple that I pulled out and didn't use. I have a portion of one of the Raggedy Ann placemats it's not a trademark Raggedy Ann, it's a knockoff because she doesn't really look like the Raggedy Ann, but you can tell she's obviously designed after her. So you can do some fun things with that. And these are leftover pages that came from this book um, that I had taken out thinking I could use the illustrations, but I didn't. So they are available for you to use. And then I have some more of the uh, Raggedy Ann flannel. Very soft fabric and there's a pretty good sized piece there so you could get some quite a few fabric flips or pockets or even put it on a journal cover. So you have that. As far as embellishments go, I just included a few fabric and trim pieces. So there's just a heart and some little squares in uh, reds and blues mostly. This one is uh, pieced together and there's a little piece of the Dresden plate um, fabric pieces and then this square. And then I added this blue rickrack, dark blue and then a royal blue and a red baby rickrack. I didn't measure them, I just cut them. And then a little piece of eyelet. And then some buttons. I have four red buttons, four blue buttons, and four white buttons. And they are vintage. Most of them are vintage. So that would be in the Raggedy Ann supply pack. Now, let's look at the journals. This is the first one that I made. It's six by nine and a quarter, and it's made with a vintage Raggedy Ann storybook. It's called Raggedy Ann Stories, and I just love this picture on the front. So this is by Johnny Gruel, and the illustrations are also his illustrations. He's the original author, and um, he based his stories off of his little girl's ragdoll, and his little girl's name is Marcella, and so she is the character in the books that owns Raggedy Ann. And I want to read something to you, which I didn't find in this book, but it was in this book. Uh, I created this journal for myself a couple years ago, and this is the Gruel Ideal. It is the Gruel Ideal that books for children should contain nothing to cause fright, suggest fear, glorify mischief, excuse malice, 
or condone cruelty. That is why they are called books good for children. I love that, and I wish we had more of that mindset in our entertainment for children today. All right, so to decorate this book, I use pieces of vintage fabrics, a vintage yo-yo. This little piece I cut into a heart shape and placed it over her body, and I put some metal corners on the corners of the book because they were frayed. I used this vintage quilt top. It had never been put into a quilt, but it was all pieced together. So I used that for the spine and then added the rickrack. And I covered up some of the um, flaws on the book. There's still some. There's a mark here and a little dig there, but this is an old book. So I just added some fun patchwork pieces to that. And then I, when I sewed the signatures in, I added some colorful buttons. And I added these little Raggedy Ann and Andy charms, which I believe someone gifted to me quite a while ago. And I still had them, so there they are on your book spine. On the inside, I used pages from the book for the end papers a piece of rickrack here. I took pages, illustrations from this book to create um, pockets for the front of all the signatures and added some little bits of fabric. I used um, some die cuts that I had just gotten from my friend Karen when we did a swap of junk journal supplies and I used almost all of them. Most of them in this book. A few went into the other book. I love this colorful ruffle trim. I think Karen also gave me that. Um, it's, I thought it was just perfect to go with the colors and the fun playfulness of these books. And then inside this pocket is a card you can pull out. It's got just a little snippet of, of a doily. Uh, it was just a leftover piece and I sewed it on there. An illustration from the book and you can write on the back. There's scrapbook paper in here wallpaper, some colored um, grid paper, another book page, and so there's lots of different kinds of papers in here. So if you saw my videos where I was decorating plain white pages, you saw that instead of doing stenciling or dyeing, I stamped and then colored. So this took a long time to do all the coloring on all the pages of these two books, but it was fun. I used my colored pencils that I got for Christmas last year and had fun. I love that Raggedy Ann and Andy stamp. This is a piece of wallpaper border here. This was also a gift from someone quite a long time ago. I'm glad I got to include it in a Raggedy Ann journal. I used Mrs. Cog's Crafts uh, Raggedy Ann digital journal kit. Um, her pages were really cute. So I, and it comes with journal cards and tags. So I split the kit up between these two books. This is one of the embellishments from Karen's pack of stuff that she gave me. And another thing I did to color the white pages was just to add some embellishments like that and just do a little bit of light stamping and a little inking around the page. There is a Raggedy Ann shape book. I just included a page in each signature and um, here I just added a journaling card with some fun flowers to give you a space for journaling. I put a, <clears throat> a card here that says R for Raggedy Ann. There's a fabric flip I made with that flannel. And I love this vintage embroidered ribbon up here. And this is grid paper that was dyed. And I, I got that from Etsy. So I used yellow in this book, and I think that book got a different color in each signature. In this journal, I used some text from the book, just for fun. Tell us all about it, Raggedy Deer, the dolls cried. I also had gotten another digital, and it was uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy paper dolls. So you will see them in the book. I, I'm not cutting out all the outfits. I will, I will cut some out. But they have all these little extra characters, and I used them, scattered them on some of the pages. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the paper dolls in a bit. 
This is a stationary page, just pale yellow with that beautiful floral arrangement, which I thought was really great in this book. There's a plaid scrapbook paper and one of the embellishments from Karen. It says, Smile. One of Mrs. Cog's images, it looks like a postcard with Raggedy Ann and Andy images on it. And I just tucked a inventory tag in there, a project life card. It says, this is my happy, and one of the Mrs. Cog's tags. Here's another instance of stamping and coloring with the colored pencils. A page out of this book and a piece of vintage embroidered trim in the appropriate colors from the digital kit here. Here's a piece of that paper placemat. I just glued some daisy trim on the edge of that book page. I created a pocket here out of fabric and then I thought that it was a little bit too short because it, uh, it just wasn't secure enough for this large tag. So I cut a piece of scrapbook paper and glued it because uh, I had already sewn this to the page. I glued it to the top of the pocket and then used a black marker to make little stitch marks around it. And I had stitched a couple patches of fabric there. This is a tag I made in a video <clears throat> with some stamping, some fabric patches, a little image from the book, and then some buttons. And I um, did the marker stitches around the edge of the tag. And then I took some yarn from a vintage needlework kit that I had gotten at a flea market or a yard sale or something. And I just used that for the tag topper. This is the other side of that stationary page, and this little image was cut from the paper doll sheets. And here's another quote from the book. And when the front gate clicked and the dollies knew they were all they were alone, they all scrambled to their feet. I love this playful floral lace trim. I took uh, illustration from the book and um, backed it with cardstock and made a little pocket. And here's another tag that I made. This is an image cut from the paper doll pages, and this is a page from the book, paper, the paperback book. Just used a scrap of scrapbook paper on the edge there. So here is where I used the paper dolls that were in that digital kit. Uh, I used a glassine bag that's decorated and I put the name Marcella that I cut from one of the paper doll sheets on there. So this is Marcella's pocket. She's the little girl who owns the rag dolls and all the other dolls that are in the stories. And her arms are just a little bit too wide to fit in there straight so I just kind of angle her so that her arms can go in and then she's not quite straight in there her arms are just angled a bit so that they'll fit in there I did cut out some of her clothing there were I don't know about eight pages of paper doll outfits with this digital and I will link this digital and Mrs. Cog's digital but I cut out some of the outfits and some of them I'm just gonna leave so that you can have the fun of cutting out paper doll outfits and also because I didn't want to keep on cutting out paper doll clothes. Took a long time to do all that coloring and you know I don't want to keep adding hours to the book and upping the price. So you will get the outfit. Some of them you may still get a sheet that's not even cut yet. But those were some of Marcella's clothes and, and there will be more in this pocket. Cut or uncut. You, uh, each kit, each book is going to get four pages of paper doll clothes. I printed the dolls twice, and then I printed the clothing once and split the eight pages up between the two books. Second signature, again, has an illustration from the book, and they all have the same colorful trim. And this pocket contains 
that image. What an interesting story that must be. All of those Raggedy Ann dolls. I am reading the book because I have a copy of this same book. The cover looks different, but it has the same stories. But I haven't gotten to that story yet. And here I used the Raggedy Ann and Andy stamp again, but a different border stamp. I just glued a Project Life card here. And this one has A for Andy. My, how the dollies all chattered when they were once again left alone in the nursery. Again, an uh, inventory tag, a Project Life card, and a tag from Mrs. Cog. I like the little ladybug up there that came with the um, die cuts from Karen, and there's a little dragonfly. piece of pretty vintage embroidered trim there. Here's another fabric pocket. I made this one taller and folded the end under to give it a hem at the top and make it more sturdy. Uh, there's lavender paper here which doesn't really go with the other colors in the book but because of the daisy I wanted to use it. It just looked like Raggedy Ann to me. So it's pale lavender with some daisies on it. So I put a red pocket on there but added a purple diamond fabric to kind of, uh, as a nod to the lavender, but it's brighter and kind of goes better with the other colors in the book. When I tell you of this wonderful adventure, I know you will all feel very happy. It has made me almost burst my stitches with joy. And here is another bag with Raggedy Ann. She does fit. She would get lost in there. So I put her in with her arm kind of catching her so you can see her head peeking out. But for safekeeping, you can tuck her all the way down in. There are some clothes cut out in there and I will add some more. I put her name on the outside of the bag and put a Project Life card back here. And the third signature she is scolding Raggedy Ann for the, all the grape jelly that's all over her. Here's another image inside. I think this is my favorite border that I used in here. It just looks so fun and happy. I love this Mrs. Cogs page. And this one has an A for Anne. There's a piece of vintage fabric back here. I love that fabric. And this one was fun. I just had these little images that were from the paper doll page and they were like on the edge of the page so I just put them on the edge of this page and I think they're really fun. Oh that is ever so much better cried Raggedy Ann. Now I can think quite clearly. Another pocket with the cards inside. This is a Mrs. Cog's image. I did use little pennants that I punched out of my scraps and put them on the ends of the ties. I forgot to point that out to you. And another fabric pocket with a diamond and a piece of scrap fabric. I love this tag.
I put that on backwards. This is the back side of the fabric. There's the bright side. At least you get to see the bright side there. All the dolls were tucked snugly in their little doll beds for the night, and the large house was very still. Every once in a while, Fido would raise one ear, partly open one eye, for his keen dog sense seemed to him that something was about to happen. I meant to put this here because there he is in his basket with his ear lifted. So I am going to glue that on that page. This was cut from the Mrs. Cog pages. I printed two to a page um, to make them smaller and then just cut him out. And I did it with another one too. And then I took the other portions that didn't get cut off and I just made them into journaling cards. What a fun book. Here's Raggedy Andy and again I use his arm to prop him up and there are our clothing pieces in here. And there is a journal card, Project Life card, and there is another page from the book as an end paper and uh, just some embellishments that came with the die cuts from Karen. My signature, I just stamped it right on that page there because there's no pocket. So this one is just called Raggedy Ann Stories. This one is Raggedy Ann and the Little Gray Kitten. So this is a little golden book with bright colors, bright green here, and his shirt looks more bright pink. <clears throat> so it doesn't have exactly the same color scheme as the other one. I used a variety of colors in here and it's different from that one because it's a golden book and so it's made differently. It has all of the pages included in the right order. I almost had a couple pages wrong but I double checked them before I sewed them in and fixed them. This is a little printed vintage fabric from the 70s and I added some colored buttons to the side. This has a flexible spine, um, the green hanging file folders, and the, but there's Tyvek in there and fabric on both sides so it's nice and secure. And I added a couple little squares of fabric in one of the little flowers that um, I got from Nancy from Wishes and Weeds. She had them in her shop one time. I covered the back with scrapbook paper and I covered the end papers with scrapbook paper. I don't always cover those things when I'm doing a golden book, but I did in this case. This is a vintage um, book plate and it had someone's name on it. So I stamped that little label and it fit perfectly over that. There's another one of Nancy's flowers. So there are some similarities, but it's, kind of, it's pretty different too. So, but on the front of each signature, I did the same thing with the pockets and a card tucked in and I used one of the placemat pieces here just stamped there. Uh, the trims are different. I used a variety of eyelets and some of them are vintage, some are new. I did the stamping on the pages. Um, this one has just a page that you flip open. You can journal on this. And I left it open at the top and tucked a tag in there. So I did some stamping on the pages. I did it, I used the same stamps but did it differently. I love this little image. It's from one of the beginning pages of the book. I think it was on the copyright page. So Raggedy Ann was pinned to the clothesline out in the sunshine where she swayed and twisted in the breeze and listened to the chatter of the robins in a nearby tree. This is from a vintage patchwork lap robe. It's got a piece of the yarn that tied it. So instead of having the quilted stitching, it was a tied quilt. And another tag that's made with a piece of Raggedy Ann book. And this little girl, she could be Marcella or she could be one of Marcella's friends. So Peterkins led the way up alleys and across streets, the dogs all scattering, pattering along behind him. It was a strange procession. Um, Fido got lost. Fido is Marcella's dog, and Peterkins knew where Fido was, so he's taking them 
to Fido. On this fabric flip, I added a little piece of eyelet to the bottom and a diamond vintage uh, fabric piece. I just stamped corners here and then colored them. Again, I added the little pennant shapes, some clusters, fabric cr clusters. Here's Marcella's bag. So this book gets all the paper dolls also. This was cut from one of the paper doll sheets. I backed it with cardstock and made a little tuck spot with it. And this was one of the journal pages that I cut or printed two to a page and made them a little bit smaller. This is just a um, notepad paper with pretty flowers on it. I thought it looked nice with this. And I added a little piece of yellow rickrack to help it stand off of the page a bit. A jar of raspberry jam was overturned and the dollies ate of this stuff until their faces were all purple. wants to catch on my golden book page and the this end of the page is folded over here and it wants to catch on that in there this is my happy uh, another stationary page with sunflowers and butterflies second signature here I love this eyelet trim. Sorry, with a blue gingham woven through it. Kind of got covered up with the pocket here, though. Hmm. Did I did I take that out of something? I'll have to go back through and look. Here's that purple paper with the daisies, lavender paper, and I added purpley colors on top there. This is a piece of patchwork um, that I made a pocket out of. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. This is a Mrs. Cog page, but I wanted, I needed a page to put a pocket, so I had to cover up the text. You got the picture here, but this is part of a book page that she made into a digital. So I covered up that text so I could have a pocket. So here's a blue colored grid page. So this book has the yellow, the blue, and I think a pink page. This is a vintage eyelet here very soft. It's another cluster. You see these corners? They look like... There's, I stamped them in black and then colored them with my colored pencils and they kind of look like blue denim. They look like they could be his pants. I just glued a list page here so to give you a place to write. Here's Raggedy Ann's bag. And I haven't cut out the clothes for this book yet, but I've just been so busy I haven't done the usual stuff that I do in the evenings, like cutting things out for journals and stuff. So I'm behind a little bit on that kind of stuff. But that will all be done by the time these books go in the shop and by the time this video goes up. I did a little stamping on this page. I think she's getting a, a haircut there so she can get new hair. Someone is fixing her. This man 
he's there to paint the nursery, I think. And he was having fun just throwing Raggedy Ann up in the air until she came down and he missed catching her and she fell into a pot of paint. So I think that goes with that story because she had to be laundered and repaired. Her hair was full of paint so they had to take her hair off and give her new hair. There's another piece of a quilt. Quilt top. It wasn't made into a quilt. And this pretty yellow vintage lace. I did some stamping on those corners. There's the pink graph paper. And another quilt piece makes another pocket. This has a Raggedy Ann book behind behind it, but he could be the little police doll that Marcella plays with. This is just um, a copy of a children's book image that I had from a long time ago, a children's activity book. And I glued her to this page and she was meant to be, you were supposed to make um, a memo holder and it had a little rectangle right here, two and a half by three and a half, that was blank that you were supposed to put a memo pad there. So I created a memo pad to put there. And that, this page is glued down. And I just put some fabric on it to decorate. And here's Andy's bag. Oh, I forgot when I was coloring the pages last night. That was one thing I did last night. I had a little bit of time to sit and color, finish coloring the pages. But I realized that there was some glue that must have, my glue bottle must have dripped on that page right there. And then it got onto this page. So I need to put something, maybe some washi tape or something to cover up those spots of glue. Here's another, uh, like a notebook, uh, notepad page, but it's a menu planner. I just liked the colors and the gingham and the polka dots. Raggedy Ann lay quietly in bed where Thomas and Annabelle had tucked her, and as she smiled at the ceiling, her candy heart, with I love you written on it, thrilled with contentment. There's Fido in his basket. Oh. Fido had one fuzzy white ear sticking up over the edge of his basket, and he gave his tail a few thumps against his pillow. Uh, you can see that I put this label on sideways because I probably was decorating it. I don't know what I was thinking, but I had it this way and glued the label on. So that is sideways. On the backs of these signatures in this book, I just... Um, put an image from the book onto cardstock and just glued it right to the page. So it's not a pocket, it's just an, just a decorative page and I just did a little collage on the corner of each one. I did not point that out to you, that they are not pockets. I don't want you to try to, well this one doesn't even have one, I just used the stationary paper there. So don't try to find the opening to the pockets on the back. Here's a library pocket. And I added some of the cutouts, little images from the paper doll page. And on the library card also, my signature is on the back. I did not do closures on these. They don't need it. They stay close very nicely. So I will add the rest of the paper dolls uh, closed in here somehow. I'll cut some of them out and I'll leave the rest for you guys to cut out. But these are in my shop all ready to go when you see this video. I hope that you enjoy these, uh, enjoyed watching these. I enjoyed making them and I hope that you'll come back to see what's next in my Pretty Pink Cottage and on my YouTube channel. I have lots of ideas for videos that aren't necessarily making journals but journal related. So come on back to see what I have in store. 
I'll see you soon. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.